Okay, we're live. Uh, 31 people here, four thumbs up before I even said a thing. So thank you for that vote of confidence. Whoever, whoever gave me the four thumbs up before I even opened my mouth, thank you very much for doing that. So who we got? I got a little laptop down here uh, below the, uh, the camera. So if you see me looking down, I'm not like avoiding your gaze or anything. I'm just uh, checking out the comments, but um, seeing a lot of good familiar names. Kirk C, All Season Angler, Todd, Terry Lacey. How you doing, buddy? Terry went out with me last night on a charter. Man, that was a rough one, wasn't it, Terry? I, it was pounding out there, but we got a few fish and what a great group. They were a fun group of guys. Uh, Blind Osprey, Mike F., Jeff Abbott, Randy Radloff, hello from Wisconsin. Well, hello back to you from Michigan. Mark Pearson, good to see you. Mike F., Will Spencer. All right, I'm going to try that. Mike Krzynowski. Man, if I blew that, which I probably did, I apologize, but I think that was pretty close. Mike Olson, how you doing? Matt Presidents, good to see you. <laughs> Terry, Patty, and the bird. Love the little king. Yeah, that was probably a very nice, uh, very nice table fair. I'm glad your bird uh, enjoyed that also, man. Terry told me some crazy stories. Terry appears to me to be a mad scientist, everyone. So if Terry Lacey ever wants to go fishing on your boat, make sure he does not bring his potato gun or his fireworks. All right, steer clear of that. But what a good guy. Um, Dennis Clement, Bill Dickens. Hey, how you doing? Jim Dabrowski, good to see you, man. Chance Flores, hey, I'm sorry, how are you, Chris? Chance, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Appreciate that. Pat Enos, hey, back to you, Pat. How are you? So um, tonight, we're going to cover the fishing report. We're going to cover um, some other things, some really important things. And we're also going to talk about paddles and uh, how we fish paddles and how I think, uh, how I use them to, to bring fish into the spread and uh, how versatile a tool that they are. All right, Travis, out of Kiwani. Love the channel, well, man. Thanks for being here. Appreciate that. All right. Deb Dowding's here. Deb and Leroy Dowding own Purple Taco Fly Supply down in uh, Charlotte, Michigan. Great group of people. Um, if you got any questions for Deb or Leroy, I'm sure is lurking about also. Um, shoot them out there. They're good people. They're always happy to hear from everyone. Um, Oh, one thing I'll say, uh, Leroy Dowding for Purple Taco got a hold of me today. He took the five new flies that I just put out last week with the, uh, the Pickled Sunshine Riverside Imitation Fly and all those other flies. He's made them into a kit. So you're going to be able to buy that five fly kit very soon, if not now, on the purpletacoflysupply.com website. Um, he's also told me that he threw some goodies in there as well, some extra beads, things like that, to kind of spice up the pot. So if you're looking to buy those five flies just in the kit form, they are going. if they're not available, they will be very soon. And I have no doubt that they are going to, pardon the pun, fly out the door. That was terrible. Somebody ought to slap me. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So check those out. If you're looking to pick up those five flies, I'm telling you, they are five really good flies. I, when I told you on that video that I think they're my favorite, my favorite kit so far i'm not lying that's going to be a really good kit to have so yeah um mjk the akuma 45 the megan's army winner with wire took two kings and a lake over the weekend hey nice job you're putting it to work that's exactly what we want andy k third place master angler third place brown in sar tied <laughs> tied bump us the wonder dog nice uh, Phil Overmeyer. Hey, you're welcome for all the help, Phil. Um, great to meet me and Bud. Thank you very much. Yeah, I ran into quite a few people here over the weekend at the shop. Uh, I, I was in here a few times. I was running, uh, running trips all weekend, and uh, we did pretty good over the weekend. Took some nice fish. Uh, Kings, steelhead, lake trout. Uh, yeah, we had a good weekend. Met some really nice people. Got some sun. A little bit, uh, of course, a little tired at the end of the weekend, but hey, that's what it's all about. Love being out there. Nick Padula just signing on. Sorry you're late. No problem, Nick. We haven't really talked about it. Pretty much just me running my mouth so far, Nick, so you haven't missed anything at all. Anyway, let's cover a couple things real quick. And the first one is a big one. All right, so we all know, as salmon aficionados that we all are, the, the salmon crazies that we all are, 
We are just coming into really the heyday of the salmon season when the big ones get really big and they break all your gear and they tear everything up and they destroy everything and it's just an absolute blast and you love every minute of it. But if you need gear, and I'm sure many, many, many of you do, Tangle Tackle is having a monster sale. And I, I, I know this from experience, nobody has sales this time of the year. And I don't know what the owner's thinking. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's working too many hours like I am and his brain is starting to get fried, but he is having a store-wide sale uh, over the next, if I remember right, over the next three days. It's going to start tonight at 8 p.m. And this is not just limited to Tangle Tackle members. Uh, future sales will be, so it's a good idea to go on the TangleTackleCompany.com website. Put your email address in there. That's all you got to do to become a member. But this sale is open to everyone, so it's going to be saving store-wide. Well, really not store-wide. I'll, I'll go down the, uh, the basic or the, uh, the num what, what the sale is going to be here in just a second. But it's not just members only. It's everyone. So if you need to gear up, and I know I do, and I know a lot of people do this time of the year, let me tell you exactly what's going to be on sale, and you're going to love this. Again, starts tonight at 8 o'clock. All rotators, spin doctors, flashers, you name it, rotators. 8 inch, 10 inch, the big ones, whatever. They are all on sale, 10% off. All flies and meat rigs, all of them on sale, 15% off. All spoons, every one of them. You've got a favorite spoon, you want 20 of them, now's the time to buy them. All spoons are 15% off. All plugs, and we know we're coming right now in the plug season where the big ones love those plugs, especially those ace highs, those, man, they're good. All plugs, 15% off. All fishing line, that includes copper, lead core, mono, you name it, all line, 10% off. Every rod and reel in the store, every one of them, is 10% off. All downrigger releases, all right, always good to have extra, always have extra downrigger releases on your boat. Always have an extra cannonball or two and some extra downrigger releases on the boat. Ask me why I know this, because I've broken them off before just like everybody else has. But all downrigger releases are 15% off. All divers, that includes the Dreamweaver, the Lure Jensen's, the, the um, Slide Divers, all of them. 10% off in all planer boards, the Ninjas, the Offshores, the Churches, you name it. All planer boards are 10% off. All, all those planer boards, 10% off. If you missed any of that, I'm not going to reread the whole the whole list here. Just when the video is over, you can go back and look at it, or just go on the TangleTackleCompany.com website starting tonight at uh, at 8 p.m. and it goes. I'm almost certain from 8 p.m. tonight until Wednesday at midnight. That's how long the sale is going to run. That's how long everything's going to be there or on sale rather. And it's as supplies last. I don't think any back orders are going to be, we're going to be able to do any back ordering. So if there's something you want, I would be on there tonight at 8 p.m. And I'd be good to get to get nail it. And uh, you got it coming to you. All right. <laughs> Todd, yes, I dropped my 300 copper in the drink this weekend fighting a double by yourself. Well, you need a new one, don't you, Todd? That, that's a terrible story and a great story at the same time. No chance, not in store only. This is online, uh, but you can come into the store also uh, if you want to come in and buy things. Yes, you can do that, but this is online. TangleTackleCompany.com. You're going to you're gonna get all those sales. You'll see them all on the website. So go on there starting at 8 p.m. or like 7.59 or 7.58 or whatever, and uh, you'll have all that, all that ready to go. All right, again, rotators, flies, spoons, plugs, all line, rods and reels, releases, divers, planer boards, all on sale. Come and get it. All right. Thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to spew that 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 sale out there. But yeah, uh, that, that is a good sale. And like I said, nobody has sales this time of the year on these kind of items. And uh, you know you're going to need it, so you might as well grab it. Jim Dabrowski just threw me a whole line of thumbs up. Jim, I'm glad you're as excited as I am about this. And it is pretty darn exciting. That's a good sale. All right. And I'll touch on that again later. If anybody uh, shows up late, you know, we can talk about that. But we already got almost 120 people on here. Thanks for being here. Second thing I'll cover real quick. We got new shirts. That is the new Tangle Tackle logo right there. In fact, I got one right here. I'll show it to the camera. That is the new improved Tangle Tackle logo. That is the front of the shirt. And on the back, I've been waiting for these shirts forever. They've taken forever 
Uh, Kirk C. Chris, you came from outside? No, uh, it should be absolutely normal, Kirk. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I've been waiting for these shirts forever, and they're finally here. I, I waited so long because I got a really good price on these, and because I got a good price on these, I can lower the cost on these. So you're going to be able to buy these, and I'll talk about that here in a sec. But yeah, that's the front. Would, I love that logo. That thing is cool. And on the back, you got my charter, my charter on there with one of my say, my favorite sayings, luck follows preparation. And then the charter logo in Manistee, Michigan underneath that. So these are now back up for sale. <clears throat> Those are now back up for sale. I have large size, large, I didn't get any mediums because nobody wanted a medium last year. I have large, extra large, and double XL for sale. All right, so the large and the extra large are 20 bucks a shirt plus $4 shipping per shirt. So 20 bucks a shirt, $4 shipping per shirt. The XLs, I gotta sell at 24 bucks a shirt and four bucks shipping per shirt. I'm sorry, the double XLs. 24 plus the $4 shipping. The double XLs were a little more costly, so you understand how that works. But anyway, these are back up for sale. If you want one, how do I wanna do this? Um, I think the easiest way would be to just email me uh, and probably through my, my charter email would be the easiest way. If you email me, Chris, at darkbluecharters, D-A-R-K-B-L-U-E charters.com. So Chris at darkbluecharters.com. And you tell me how many shirts you want, um, the sizes you want. I will get you a, a number of the price and I'll email that back to you and I'll tell you exactly how to pay. We'll do that through PayPal. Fail, but that's the way we're gonna do it. And how many? I, I got somewhat limited quantities. I got like 50, 60 shirts. But uh, if we get a you know a big run on these, where a lot of people want these, I can throw another order in pretty darn fast and have more within a couple weeks. So anyway, they're back up for sale. Thanks to everyone that wants one. All right. What else we got? Fishing report. Hey, it says it in the title, so we might as well do that, right? All right, so fishing out of Manistee over the weekend is starting to get really good. I ran charters all through the weekend. We had pretty good numbers, um, 10 to 12 to 15 fish days. Um, some people did a little better, some people did worse. Hey, it's all fine. As long as you're out there just having fun, that's what it's all about. But the areas that I found in Manistee that were working pretty well over the weekend were the 13s up to the 18s. So pretty much straight out and slightly south all the way up to the 18s, which is of course straight out and a few miles north. And if you don't know what I mean by the 13s and the 18s, 15s, whatever, if you look on a map, and I know I've covered this before, but if you look on a map and you look at the latitude and longitude lines, if you look at Manistee, it's almost sitting right on that number 15 line. As you go down, the numbers decrease. As you go up, the numbers increase. So that's what we mean when we say the 13s or the 14s or the 20s or the 24s. They, go, they get bigger as you go north. Now, as you go west, those numbers also increase, uh, but that's when we go offshore fishing. That's when we use those numbers more. So really in general, if you hear people on the radio talking about, hey, I'm in the 12s and so many foot of water, that's what they're talking about. It's normally that north-south line. So anyway, like I said, the 13s up to the 18s have been really good out of Manistee. Anywhere from 120 foot of water up to 220 foot of water has been holding fish. The break's a little deeper. We've had a north wind over the last few days, actually over the last like four days, I think. The temperature break has gone down to about 70 feet, but I did find smaller pockets of water where the temperature break was down like 50 feet. So those spots were seen, I don't, I don't know if they seem to hold more fish, but I did find fish in those spots. But there's fish scattered all through there. 13th to the 18th, 120 out to 220. Run your gear. I would start. I was running some riggers at 45 feet down, and I was having bites. And I was running some down riggers down at 90 feet, and I was having bites. So, spread your gear out. We were running riggers at 45, uh, I think 65 and 95 plus for the majority of the days. We were running two, 225 coppers, 300 coppers, and 400 coppers, and they were all doing pretty well. We were running five colors, 10 colors, and 13 colors, and they were also all doing well. High divers, I had the majority, or the majority of the time, I had my high divers out 190 to 210 on a setting number three, and my low divers, the majority of the time, I have them on a setting number one. I had them anywhere out from 75 feet all the way out to 150, maybe 170 a few times also. My high divers, I had loaded up with, let me find it, 
most of the time um, I had flash or fly on my high divers. Double pearl, either the fish scale or the straight double pearl were working well with the riverside or the pickled sunshine flies. Also, the chrome frog was hitting fish. Um, yesterday, we took quite a few fish on that chrome frog in the morning with a riverside fly on it, also on a high diver, and that was back 180, uh, if I remember right. My low divers have been loaded up with meat rigs lately. Uh, the ones that have been working pretty darn well. Oh, another rig that was working. That is the uh, the eight inch green paddle. What do they call this? Uh, the emerald green double crush. So that emerald green with the double crush on both sides, that was working well on a high diver with, also with the pickled sunshine or riverside fly. I was running almost exclusively riverside flies and pickled sunshine flies throughout the weekend and they were all, they were all taking fish. All right, low divers, meat rigs. I was having good luck. On, this is one of my favorite meat rig uh, rotators right here, the live wire, the eight inch live wire by Dreamweaver. That thing coupled up with the magic frog by Diabolical was taking good fish. The, also this rig again, that uh, green with the double crush with the kryptonite meat rig from Dreamweaver, that was taking good fish. And again, that double pearl or fish scale double pearl, eight or 10 inch with the diabolical Valhalla, of Ra Valhalla, I think is the right way to say that. Um, that was also taking fish. That's why I was running on the low divers. For my downriggers, my out and downs, I was running spoons on my low, or on my shoot rigger, my lowest one. I was running the big beck holds, either the black or the white, with riverside flies on them or pickled sunshine flies. That's my, that was always my deepest downrigger. But my out and downs had spoons and my coppers and my lead cores all had spoons as well. So I'll show you which spoons were working. And I'll tell you right now, this little booger right here, that's the new A-bomb from Dreamweaver. I had that on a 10 color all weekend long and that thing was smoking hot. That is a really good spoon. The fish couldn't seem to resist that. We caught kings, steelhead, and lake trout on that thing all weekend long. Really nice spoon. So that on a 10 color was great. The old purple nurple was working again on a 300. That was a good spoon over the weekend. The bad toad and the half moon series bad toad and the RV series were also working. That was one of my better spoons over the weekend. The bloody nose was taking fish on one of my out and downs. The Atomic Melon in RV Moonshine, of course, you know, that Bloody Nose and that Purple Nurple, those are all moonshines, that Bad Toad is moonshine. But that Atomic Melon in RV was also taking good fish. The Blue Knight and the Green Knight in the four inch and the five inch were also hitting bites. And two staples, the Moonshine's Green Flounder Pounder in the RV and the five eyes also in the rv were also working so that's a lot of the spoons that were on my coppers and my lead cores they were all working well but that little bugger right there i tell you what that a bomb that thing was really taking some rips that thing it looks like shredded cheese right now in my boat the, the hook is completely shredded of paint the the tape is getting torn off there's bite marks all over it and i love it i think it's the most beautiful spoon in the world right now <laughs> I tell you a story, that bad toad, so that bad toad and me, we've been together a long, long time. Normally the RV series, but we've been a couple for a long, long time. Last year, this thing started to let me down for whatever reason, like around August. I just could not buy a fish on this, so I broke up with it. It was a bad breakup. It wasn't pretty, but we broke up. And then this year I decided to, eh, I, I gave it a call and brought it back out. And that thing has been working again. So we have a beautiful relationship once again. And I'm very happy with it. Anyway, that's what I was working over the weekend. Um, if you're in need of those things, of course, we got them here on the website. Or if you got them, definitely, definitely run them. Okay. See what I'm missing here on the uh, comments. All right, so Deb's answering a few questions about the recipe packs. It's thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for the pickled sunshine recipe. Yeah, absolutely. Mark R. In Wisconsin wants your fish back. You can't have it, man. It is, you can't. I'm sorry. No matter uh, no matter how much you pay me, you can't have them back. 
Yeah, Nick, uh, Nick Padua, I know the Salmon Bite's been pretty good down your way also. I, I watched uh, some of the weigh-in from the uh, Ludington tournament. We did not do Ludington this year. Uh, I'm, I'm bummed that we didn't, but it just didn't match our schedules. But uh, congratulations to the winners at Ludington. I believe it was Blue Fairways that won the Pro, and I think it was Slimy Hands that won the Am. So congratulations to all of you. Well done. That's a good tournament to win. You put that on your resume, um, it's a good thing to have. Blind Osprey, Bad Toad is amazing. Yep, it is. Yep, we're back together, happy to say. Uh, Jason, lots of kings caught in the Ludington. Yeah, Jason, you're not kidding. Some a couple 30-pounders came through the scales down there as well. So, yeah, it's good to see. Um, I did talk to one boat that fished down by the point last night, and uh, they had, I think they had eight, eight or nine kings, and the majority of them were adults. So there should be some kings sticking around by Ludington also. If you're down that way, hey, check out the point. And I would still run those things that I just showed you. I have no doubt that that's probably, uh, probably, sorry, I just got distracted there. But yeah, those things I'm sure will, will work down there. <laughs> Travis, you're trying to putt while listening to the report? Hey, I'm sorry, man. Phil Quinn, are we doing the splash? I think we are. Um, at least the other members of the team, I, I believe they're going to fish it, maybe in Jim's boat. I have, I have charters that weekend, so I'm not going to be able to. But those other three knuckle draggers should be up around this way. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, in essence, the team will be fishing it. I'm just not going to be out there myself. To go to Joe, you got two in the boat on the weekend. Joe, I got a text from you. You said you had a salmon in the boat. Good job. All right. So, let's talk about tonight's topic. Uh, tonight's topic is paddles, how I use them, what I like about them, what I dislike about them, really the different styles. And uh, if you got questions on any of that, hey, just sh just hold off until I'm done talking because I really I can't read and talk at the same time. So, you know, my brain is pretty limited. So hold your questions till the end. But, oh, I wanted to say this also to my sisters, my two younger sisters, Sarah and Laura. Happy birthday to you today. Love you. Um, I texted you and you answered me back, but I just wanted to say on your happy birthday to you. If everybody wants to wish my sisters happy birthday, you're more than welcome to. I'm sure they'd be uh, tickled to see that. Anyway. Flashers, get some questions on flashers from time to time. How do I use them? What do I like about them? What do I dislike about them? How do you use them? How do you rig them? You know, what's so special? What sucks? All of those things. So we'll, we'll go over that. Um, I'm just gonna say this right out. Flashers are almost, if spin doctors are working, more than likely some flashers are gonna be working. There's hardly a day that goes by. There's not one type of big, um, flasher. What I mean by flat, you know, we all know what a spin doctor is. We know what that looks like. It looks like a fish. Flashers to me are just big paddles. And that's why I'll refer to them as for the rest of this time. We'll call them paddles. Because I don't know, it says it right on there. Paddles. So we'll call them paddles. These paddles come in a variety of sizes. The, the most common ones are the 8 inch and the 11 inch. And then you get some of these big old, I think these are 12 or 13 inches from the Aki Fisher and, you know, John Kings and the Beck Holden Sons. You know, these are the big ones. And there's not a day that goes by that there isn't some type of paddle somewhere in my spread. And the reason for that, and normally, normally the biggest paddle that I have in my arsenal is my deepest presentation. And like I said earlier, it's almost always one of these Beck Holden Sons, either the white paddle or the black paddle with the pearl or the crushed tape on, on either side. And that thing, I really like running it down on my shoot rigger, my middle down rigger. Um, because not only does it take fish, I think it brings fish into the spread. And so if I'm if I'm optimizing that in the center of my spread, if I'm if I'm locating that in the center of my spread, I feel it's going to bring fish into it. And I know it does because I see them show up on the graph. But I know it brings fish into it. And even if they don't hit that thing as they peel off or go up or go down, there's other things that's going to be swimming by them. And maybe this one didn't didn't catch them well enough to you know to make them bite. But maybe one of those other things will. So. This thing is always, almost always in the center of my spread and almost always my deepest presentation. Again, it's bringing those fish in. I'll equip that most of the time with a fly. And uh, the Pickled Sunshine or the, uh, the KRW Riverside fly is by far my fly of choice for these big ones on that center rigger. And you gotta lengthen your fly links back on these things. That was a mistake I made years and years ago. I had way too short of a fly length on these things. So somebody much smarter than me and much more experienced than me told me how to set that fly up. And it's really pretty easy. 
when you get flies from Dreamweaver or KRW or whoever it may be, they, I think they only come with about 36 inches of line on there. And that's not going to be enough for these big, these big center shoot rigger flashers. What I was told and the way I've ever done it from now on, I'll take that fly off, I'll make my own long leader. I'll use the same beads, the same hook, same everything, just a longer leader. And what I'll do is I'll take that leader, I'll drop the hook down to the floor, and I'll bring that leader up to the top of my belt buckle. So it's from the floor up to the top of my belt buckle. That's my leader length. And I'm about six feet tall, so you gotta imagine that's well over you know, three feet, three and a half feet long, but that's a really good rule of thumb on these big rotators. So again, hook down on the floor, just touching the floor, bring that thing up to about your belt buckle, top of the belt buckle. That's a real easy way to get your leader length on these big flashers. All right. <clears throat> A lot of guys, well, I've had this question also. Do, do you run meat rigs on your paddles? Uh, yeah, I do, and no, I don't. What I mean by, I know that's very, very straight. That's a very ambiguous answer, but uh, the 8-inch paddles are where I think the meat rigs really shine on these things. I don't have any 8-inchers here. There wasn't any in the shop. Somebody must have cleaned them out. But if I'm going to run meat rigs on my paddles, I almost exclusively run them on my 8-inch ones. I think they perform much better on those things. Um, when you get into these bigger paddles and the bigger rotations, I think that can almost mess up some of that meat rig. Um, so that 8-inch rotation on these things really seems to tune them in much better. Where these big ones really shine, um, I'll take that back. And here's the caveat to that for some meat rigs. These big fish-style flashers, the big ones either made by John King or the Oki Tackle, these things with meat rigs really seem to work as well also. I think the, ro I, I, not I think, I know the rotation is different on these things compared to what you see in maybe one of these big stinger paddles. I know the rotation is different. So don't be afraid to put a meat rig. If you've got some of these big 12 inch John Kings or Okies, don't be afraid to throw some meat rigs on there. They will catch fish. In fact, I, I guarantee you they will. Eventually they'll catch a fish. They do every year for us. Um, but when you get into the more classic paddle size uh, or the 12 inch, 11 inch, you know, the big paddles like these, I really like flies on these things. I tend to stay away from meat rigs on those. I'm not saying they won't work, but uh, those really shine well with the big flies on there. Also, be careful running something like that on your coppers and your cores. That pull on these things is enormous. It puts a lot of strain on your gear, and you're going to find that your boards aren't going to run quite right. Um, where these things really come through for us are on downriggers and low divers and high divers. You can run these on low divers, these big paddles. Um, high divers you can also, but I like to stick these down on my low divers. Bigger diver, they handle them a little bit better, and you can run a nice big flasher down there with a nice big fly, with a nice long lead on that thing. That's another way to bring fish into your spread. So, um, just some quick things on those. What else did I want to say on these? Covered uh, fly length, meat rigs, absolutely. You can run them on these things. Again, mostly on your fish style or your eight inch, especially those pro troll. Those eight inch pro trolls with a, with a meat rig, man, those things are good. Those are, that's a really good presentation. Uh, the big ones with flies, again, get them on your deep presentations, get them down in that cold water, let it start bringing that fish into your spread. Then they'll see the other things even if they don't bite that. Speed wise, you can creep these things down. Um, even though that they're a bigger style flasher, you can still creep them down to 1.8, 1.9, They'll still perform just fine. All right. Um, what else do I want to say? Depth, of course, it's going to vary where the fish are. But again, I like keeping these things down to some of my deeper presentations. Later in the year, uh, when the fish are you know getting bigger and as the sun comes up and they go down in that ice cold water, that's another time when these big old honkers can really shine, really bring some fish out of those cold depths. So don't, if you're going deep on some things, don't be afraid to throw some of those big presentations out there. There's something else I want to talk about also. It's, it's slipping my mind right now. Uh, but can't think of it right now. I apologize. But there was something else I was going to talk about with these things. Oh, that's what it was. So somebody asked me one time, hey, what if you had to explain the difference between a, a, a paddle and a spin doctor. I mean, what's the big difference between the two? You know, they both spin in the water, they both pull the gear, they both catch fish. The spin doctor has a really unique, um, a really unique way that it rotates. If you could actually see, if you ever watch a, a video of a spin doctor down the water, you'll see that thing, it'll actually come over the top and almost 
thump its way back down. It'll actually almost make like a thumping motion in the water. So it's an up and thump and an up and then thump. Where these paddles are almost more of a continuous, just around and around and around with no variation to it whatsoever. Unless you increase speed or unless you, you know, make a turn, something like that, and make that, that either spin up or slow down. But that spin doctor has that, that, that up, you, you know what I'm talking about. I think these paddles also rotate in a bigger arc. Even the eight inches versus the eight inch spin doctor, I think that these also, the, the paddles will rotate in a bigger arc. So don't be afraid to throw out at least one paddle per day, whether it be on your shoot rigger, your, down, your, your deepest presentation, um, throw that thing out on a, on a 300 copper with a meat rig or a fly. Throw that thing out on a low diver or a high diver um, with either a, a, a fly or a meat rig. At least have one out a day and, let, and figure out what the fish are telling you. If that thing takes a couple whacks, don't be afraid to put out another one. Similar size, similar colors, or just duplicate it all together on the other side of the boat. All right, listen to what the fish are telling you because there's days if I got spin doctors working out or fishing on one side of the boat and over on the other side, I got one or two paddles and those paddles are taking the hits. I'm taking those spin doctors out and I'm switching over to similar size paddles in similar, similar color variations. All right. Hope that makes sense to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, paddles, spin doctors, they go hand in hand. There's not like something I wake up and I go, okay, today's Tuesday. And, uh, you know, looking at my magic color chart, my magic, uh, fish cattle or fish uh, app <laughs> I got on my phone. I know I got to run paddles. It just doesn't work that way. Go on what, uh, what's been working for you. Go on, what the, go on what the fish is telling you. Go on what has been working for other boats and what you've gleaned off them for information. If they're telling you, hey, we're running paddles over here with flies and meat rigs and this is what's working, don't be afraid to go grab them or go get, a, get yourself a couple of them and get them out there, all right? But again, there's no, there's no way I can wake up in the morning and go, okay, today's a paddle day. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So work it with you or work it for yourself, work it on your own boat, figure out what's working, what's not, and just make those adjustments. That's some of the best boats that I know around here, those charter captains that just constantly put, put fish in the boat. They pay attention to the small things and the small things can be as much as, and it can be as much as the color of an eye on one of these paddles. I told this story before but um, there's a captain around here who is, pr he is a fantastic captain. I took a, lot of, took a lot of time to get to know the guy and figure out how he does things. But he told me a story one time of how he was running uh, the exact same fish, uh, fish style flasher with the exact same meat rig, one on one side of the boat, one on the other side of the boat, the exact same everything. And one on one side was just smoking the fish. The one on the other side would not take a hit. So he pulled him up, he looked at him, and the eye color on one was red. The one that was taking all the fish was red. The one on the other side was white. And he said that made all the difference. He put a red eye, or he just changed the eye colors around, made them both the same, got it back down there, and they both started working. So pay attention to those little, little things. Pay attention to your leader links. A two or three inch difference on a leader link can make all the difference in the world. If you got one that's really working well and another one that's not, and they're the same exact setup, Check your leader links. Check the way, check the swivels that you got on them. Make sure you have the same swivels. Some swivels allow for greater uh, variation and rotation. Check everything. Um, pay attention to those little things. Pay attention to your speed. Pay attention that we've talked about all this before, your temp, your direction of travel, which side of the boat is taking more hits, adjust to that. You know, there's just a lot of tiny little things. And it takes a lifetime to, to figure those things out. It would probably take a hundred lifetimes to, to really figure it most of the things out <clears throat> anyway that's what i got for you on paddles again it's real similar to spin doctors i ran through that pretty quick but really it's a, it's the same thing we talked about last week on spin doctors flasher fly meat rigs they all work on these things all right let's uh let's let's take some questions here and we'll talk about anything that you want to talk about Happy to answer any questions. We're like uh, 35 minutes in. 157 people. Thank you so much for being here. Jeff Spear, hello back to you. Jeff, how you doing, bud? Cameron Chisholm, what size are my high divers? I use the uh, size 4s from Dreamweaver, the 107, 107 millimeters. All right. 
Americano, have you or can you run spoons off your spin doctors? You can. I don't, but I know people that have. Absolutely you can. Uh, it's just not something that I do, but it will work. But I will say this. If you're going to run spoons off your rotators, make it a big leader length, all right? Because that spoon has an action all its own. You can actually destroy that lure action by putting it behind the spin doctor too close. Uh, seven, okay. Ed uh, Steinke, I run seven rods, two down riggers. How many paddles or spin doctors would you run? At least two, at least two. Uh, you'll, you'll get fish coming into the spread with those things. Best lure for staging kings from Chance Flores plugs. Uh, a good, bright UV plug. The Mother of Pearl from, uh, from Ace High, from Silver Horde, that's a great one. Dave or Style, when do you switch to spoons? Dave, I run spoons all year long. There's, there's always spoons in my spread some, at, throughout the year. Unless it's late in the year and it's a plug bite only, or if I got a real good meat rig program working and I go to meat rigs only, other than that, um, I have spoons out all the time. Uh, will I, Mark, or Matt K, will you be getting Black War Frog uh, from, from Diabolical back in stock soon? Uh, if we're out, I'm sure we'll put another order in soon. Hugh, Huey Mara, how you doing, bud? What are you running for leader poundage? Hugh, I'm guessing you're talking from diver back to rotator. I'm running 50-pound big game. Americano, you're welcome. <laughs> John Thompson, what happened to the old squid that has been around for 30-plus years? Nothing happened to it. They're still around. And believe it or not, they still work. And in fact, uh, there's still a squid or two that goes out uh, for lake trout for me every now and then. Tom Ridgick, what size low divers? So 124 millimeter from Dreamweaver. Those are really good divers. They run really true. Teresa Flanders, we caught a good lake trout on a 300 copper with a glow J plug. Congratulations, Teresa. Well done. Cam, I think I just uh, I think I just answered that, but uh, 107 for my high divers. And BMK, yep, you just threw it out there. Thank you. Christopher Spallone, what temp are you targeting for Kings and temp for Lakers? So, Chris, for Kings, I look for 50 degree and below water, unless it's really early in the morning or, re or getting towards evening. Uh, then you can bring some of your gear up into that out of temp range above the break, and you'll find feeding Kings in there. Lake trout, I rarely target lake trout like suspended unless I see them on the graph. Most of the lake trout I catch are right down on bottom or near bottom. Ray Castillo Jr., you all talking about copper and lead. You have braid on your poles. Is that no good? Well, Ray, it depends on what you're using it for. Copper and lead core is a weighted line. That it's used to get your presentations down to a deeper depth. So that's what that's used for. Um, you know, braid's not going to get you any depth. Brian Burns gotten way better at fishing since washing the channel. Hey, thanks, Brian. I appreciate that, man. It's very nice of you. Dennis Clement, getting short hits. Ever cut the tail off your flies, getting a, giving, making a smaller target? Um, no. What I'm normally, if I'm seeing fish show up on the graph, or if I'm getting little taps on my downriggers, or little bursts on my divers where I know they're short stroking them, uh, I'll bump my speed up. And that will normally trigger them to actually grab that whole thing. Make it a little bit tougher for them to bite. In fact, just, was it yesterday or the day before? We had a mark on the graph. I got a 12-inch gra graph on the back of my boat so I can watch what's going on down there. And I, I saw this one mark right by my, sh my center downrigger and uh, showed up at it, and then it disappeared, and then it showed back up like 5, 10 seconds later. So I grabbed that downrigger arm, and I actually jigged it seven or eight times. And as soon as I dropped it the last time, the thing went off, and there was a fish on there. So if you're getting those short hits um, or you're getting, uh, if you're getting those show-ups but no takers, Bump your speed up a little bit, or even jig your downrigger arms. That's a lot of times you'll get them to strike. <laughs> uh, combat sea fleas. Rather be fishing, Bob H. What would I do for a, to combat sea fleas? I tell you what, they're 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 a nuisance. There is a specific monofilament line out there called Flea Flicker. I think Andy makes it uh, that does a good job keeping the fleas off. But really, I just deal with them. If I'm bringing line in and I got sea fleas on it, I just whack that line in the water a couple times. It, it breaks them right off. 
Um, if you're starting to get them to gum up your, your eyelets or whatnot, just take that rod and smack it in the water a couple of times. You'll break them off. You won't break your gear off. You'll, you'll get the sea fleas off the line. Matt K, what's your best advice uh, for an upcoming tournament? I'll be in pre-fish. Pre-fish, pre-fish, pre-fish. Find the time to pre-fish. I can't say that enough. Uh, Greg Barton, what reels do I run for my wire divers? Are cold waters okay? Yeah, cold waters are a good reel, um, but for my wire divers, I went a step up and I went to the Daiwa Saltists. They are by far the smoothest reel I have ever used. Pricey, but man, are they worth it. Um, much less break-offs, much less lost fish, much more control over the fish. The drags on those things are by far the smoothest drags I have ever used. Cam, you're welcome. Cortland, just fear. Cortland makes a flea flicker. That might have been the one I was thinking about. I haven't used it in years, so uh, pardon me for having some cobwebs up here. Do I use snubbers? Ron Ruiz, yes, absolutely. I use the Dreamweaver rip cords. They are a must for big kings, an absolute must. Uh, names Johnston. <laughs> you ever let lead cord out beyond the backing for extra depth? No. Typically for me, as soon as my backing hits the water, that's when I'm putting the board on. Just letting extra backing out is not going to get you the depth that you think it is. Really, if you need more depth, just go with longer lead core, longer copper, things like that. It's not worth the hassle. Richard Frank, like the channel, learning a lot. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Very nice of you. All right. Uh, just to recap, shirts are back in stock on sale. 20 bucks a shirt for the large, extra large. 24 for the double XLs. They are back in stock. Email me, Chris, at darkbluecharters.com for information if you want to buy one. Also, the big sale. <coughs> Pardon me. I just had a fly, thry, a fly fly in my mouth. <laughs> a little protein. Um, big sale for Tangle Tackle. Starts tonight, 8 p.m. All rotators, spin doctors, paddles, everything. On sale, flies, meat rigs, spoons, plugs, all line, including core and copper, rods and reels, releases, divers, planer boards, everything on sale for three days. Three days. You got till Wednesday to get the gear that you know you want, you know you're going to need. Um, you don't need to be a member. Like I said already, that's for all people to come on to the TangleTackleCompany.com website. Again, I don't mean to sit up here and sound like a, a, a you know a salesman in any way. But if there's a good sale out there, I will definitely let you all know about it. So TangleTackleCompany.com is the website. Be ready in 17 minutes because that's when it's going to start. Have your mouse ready. Be ready to click because I don't think there's going to be any back orders available. And it's really first come, first serve. So let the feeding frenzy begin. That's it. All right. Diver rods. Yeah, all rods and reels. Everything. Yep, all diver rods, reels, all reels, all. You, I'm looking around the shop. Basically, everything I see is going to be on sale here in about 15 minutes. Rick W, more thumbs up. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for uh, for doing that. Hey, and also, if you if you like what you see in here, just consider subscribing. I appreciate it. If you don't want to subscribe, I understand that also. I'm never here to beg anybody or twist anybody's arm. Chance Flores, best Sunday show out there. Thanks, man. Appreciate that, Chance. Do I use the same, Nick Padula, that's a good question. Do I use the same reel for my highs, as my, same as my high divers and my low divers? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Greg Golub, been talking to other store owners, you know, product is hard to get this year. You're not kidding. Um, yeah, uh, what we have in stock, we actually have a really, uh, there's a good, decent amount of stock in here right now. Uh, and we'll, re, we'll restock as fast as we can. I think we all know that product is really hard to get this year. Really hard to get, no matter where you are. Big John is down um, big time because of product. Uh, you, you name it. Fishing line, rods, reels, um, meat rigs, spoons. They're all hard to get this year because of the way that the shipping, sh shipping situation is right now. So, yeah. Bill Dickens, too bad you put your order in yesterday. Man, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that you did. Uh, I can only get this information out really when uh, when I get it and when I'm allowed to. You know, I'm on a short leash around here. <laughs> Copper or core? Yes. Any given day, one can outdo the other or they both work. Like this last weekend, they were both working for me. So uh, get both. 
You'll, you'll be happy that you did. Trust me. You'll be happy that you got both. All right. What do we got here? 142 people here. I got 51 thumbs up. No super chatters tonight. That's fine. I appreciate just everybody being here. Let's get out of here. The comments are winding down. Have a great night. Get ready. You got, uh, you got 15 minutes. Get your wish list ready. Um, hide the computer from your wife or your husband and get ready to start clicking, okay? All right, let's get out of here. Have a great night. Be safe. I will be back here next Sunday at 7 p.m. Don't forget Purple Taco has that fly kit now. Be ready to get that if you want it. And I was trying to think of what else I wanted to say, but eh, that's it. Let's get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Be safe. We'll see you.